Ribosomes are really, really awesome, and I'm so excited to get to know them better in my postdoc, and so I want to help you get to know them better as I get to know them better. So here are some fun facts about ribosomes that you might not know. So ribosomes are these protein-making uh, machinery that follow the instructions in the messenger RNA, and they, um, catalyze um, so like speed up or help mediate the joining of the new um, amino acids so protein letters in the sequence specified by the messenger RNA and so there are these um, complexes that are helping build protein based on mRNA instructions a cool thing about ribosomes is that unlike a lot of enzymes um, so react um, like biological catalysts unlike a lot of them the ribosome is actually like the actual catalysis part is carried out by RNA. So the ribosome is a complex of RNA and proteins. So the human ribosome, it's, um, so it's about, like ribosomes are about like 60-40 RNA to protein. It depends on the species. Human ribosomes are like huge. They're like 4.3 megadaltons. So mega is a million. And I'm used to working with a protein that is like 100 kilodaltons. So we're talking like 100 kilodaltons to like 4.3 megadaltons so whoop, a lot bigger and it makes sense because these complexes are actually made up of like four huge RNAs um, and like 80 proteins so you might um, see those the, in pictures you're often like graphics you see um, those little like cartoons you have the ribosome it has the big part the large subunit and the small part the small subunit um, but each of those is actually made up of lots and lots of different components. And so we have those like four main RNAs um, and those like 80 or so um, proteins. So it's this huge big complex, but the RNA is actually doing the really important work. Speaking of the RNA, even though there's only four of them compared to like the 80 proteins, you have like 60-ish percent, so you have a majority of it is actually going to be the RNA in the ribosome. And you have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ribosomes. So if you look at like a space-filled model of a cell, you'll see it's like chock full with ribosomes because your cells need to make a lot of different proteins. And what's really, um, because so much of the ribosome is RNA and we have so many ribosomes, we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ribosomal RNA. In fact, like 80% or so of our total RNA inside of our cells is actually this ribosomal RNA. And this can be um, actually a real problem when it comes to various techniques for sequencing um, various protocols like that. Um, when you're trying to do some sort of RNA sequencing, um, small RNA sequencing, various um, messenger RNA sequencing, there's often a ribosomal RNA depletion step to actually get rid of this ribosomal RNA. So you are not just like sequencing the ribosomal RNA and then missing all of the stuff that you really, really care about. Um, and so this is often done using like um, biotinylated, um, biotinylated oligo, so like strands of DNA that match or they complement the ribosomal RNA. And then they're attached or conjugated to some sort of thing. Um, so like that is going to allow you to capture them. So like a biotin tag that you can then capture with like mag with beads that are bound to like streptavidin and then you can capture these out and you can actually like physically remove these ribosomal RNAs before you try to do all of the various like ligation and sequencing steps for the rest of the RNA so you're not um, getting these. What's another cool thing about this, so I am going to have to be doing this when I do like ribosome profiling is actually deplete the RRNA, which is kind of funny because I'm trying to find the ribos the protection fractions of the messenger RNA um, bound by the ribosomes. Basically, you cut around the ribosome and then sometimes, although the um, the nuclease or the ribonuclease, so the RNA cutter that you use to cut around the ribosome, um, although it mostly doesn't cut the actual ribosome when it's like intact because it's all structured and um, that sort of thing um, and wrapped up in all these proteins and various things. So normally it doesn't cut that, but it can cut that and then you get these pieces that are potentially in the range of the RNAs that you're isolating. So what you do is you like cut around the ribosome and then you isolate the RNA, like the small sized RNA that's like about the size of the ribosome footprint. So basically the ribosome, when it's sitting on it, it's about 30 um, nucleotides long, that sequence that it sits on, the amount of space it takes. Um, and so the 
what's gonna happen is that you cut around it and then you want to isolate those short RNAs that are about 30 nucleotides long. But if you have cut your ribosome um, when you are doing the cutting around the ribosome, if you accidentally cut the ribosome, then you can get short pieces that might get picked up um, in, when you're just isolating the small bands. Um, this band that corresponds to the size of the, rib the RNA that you are looking for, the ribosome protected fragment. So you can use the um, RNA depletion um, um, the R R R RNA depletion um, step in order to remove that before you then take those sequences that you generated and then do like library preparation and stuff where you can that prepare those sequences they make DNA from them and then you circularize that so it makes it easier to sequence and then you do all the sequencing um, to actually sequence those and hopefully now you don't have all those RNA sequences in there um, or those R RNA or RNA, I need to keep saying that over and over so I get more used to it. One more really, really cool thing. So you know in the graphics you typically see like when the amino acids are bringing bot being brought together in the ribosome and you have this little cartoon graphic um, and then you have the tRNAs and they look like they're really really big compared to the ribosome and you have these these amino acids which look like they're really really big so those things are like not to scale so actually this the ribosome is really really huge and these amino acids are really really tiny so even though in the pictures it might look like there's just a couple or like one amino acid like add it in the chain that's actually like coming out of the chimney of the ribosome so there's like the three sites um a p and e um so the you have the p in the p you have the um the nascent chain so like the growing chain and then the a site um the new guy comes in and then it gets transferred from um, the p to the a and then everything kind of shifts over um and then the other one leaves out the e site well when it's in the it's like the actual growing protein or the growing pet polypeptide at this point it's actually coming out of a of a tunnel in the ribosome like this exit tunnel and it turns out that instead of just like one or two amino acids fitting in there there's like 40 i had like no idea until i started all this like learning a bit more about ribosomes in depth that there's like 40 um amino acids and the protein can actually kind of start folding a little bit on its way out it's pretty wild right um and so that's just some fun facts about ribosomes and probably expect some more fun facts about ribosomes as I learn more about ribosomes because they're really cool, uh, but they're also really complex and there's a lot of literature um, and lots of really cool stuff. And so I'm just still trying to um, digest it all um, and make sense of it all and try to incorporate um, everything that I'm reading into the work that I'm going to be doing, which is like, I don't, can't tell you the specifics of the work I'm going to be doing, but it involves ribosomes. And so yeah, get ready to hear more about them. <laughs>